Hi there. It is St. Patrick's Day. It's also my birthday, and we're going to cook up some corned beef and cabbage. Um, we're going to do it my family tradition style as a New England boiled dinner. So stick around. Okay, to get started, we don't need a whole lot. We've got, sorry about that. I've got a small little corned beef brisket, almost four pounds, 3.92. We are going to put it in our pot with a little gel, and we're gonna empty the seasoning contents into that too. I, uh, it took me a long time to really like this meal. My mom used to make it all the time at St. Patrick's Day. Um, I've always liked corned beef, but I was extremely fussy when it came with vegetables. So it uh, kind of grew on me over time. I am not very fussy at all now, but uh, man, I sure was as a kid. Okay, so there's... There's that. I got quite a bit of coals going there, and this is this thing is going to be a very slow cook. And it's going to be at least four hours, depending on how how low of a simmer I keep it and stuff. It's probably going to be maybe a little bit longer than that, but we're going to start with four. seasoning packet. That's, they could find a little bit better way of packaging that. Second seasoning packet. That's a perfect uh, camping meat. Well, other than it takes so long, but if you've got other stuff you're doing, the meal itself just just cooks itself. Uh, I mean, all you're doing is simmering things for a long period of time. So, okay, then we are going to cover it with we've got unfiltered apple juice. I would have much rather have had apple cider, but that seems to be easier to find in the fall and hard to find this time of the year so we are going to oh they trick you and make you think it's really dark don't they yeah. so we're going to cover it with that and I'm going to leave that over there. I've got some reserve water as that steams off. I'm going to have to replace it with stuff. And then set it on the coals, which I've got to get shoveled out first. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we'll just keep keep building coals and keep throwing them underneath here, and we're gonna let this little guy simmer for, like I said, about four hours. Um, I've got uh, quite a few vegetables to go with that, and we'll discuss them at the time. And I'm also going to make um, and 
Irish oatmeal soda bread, but that uh, will be a couple hours from now. So we'll, we'll talk more about that at that time too. I just wanted to get this started, and then uh, as more activity and stuff starts coming up, um, we'll turn the cameras on and start uh, either talk about it or start doing some of the other things. But for right now, it is uh, just a little after one in the afternoon, and he's underway. Oh yeah, it's starting to be pretty good. You want to try to scape off some of the foamy stuff if you can. And I don't have enough there to scrape with this spoon yet. It's, it's been ooh, right about an hour. It's doing pretty good. Okay. off that little foamy stuff as best as we can. And I'm going to have to add some more water to that because it's starting to... Well, you can smell the apple juice. Ooh, we don't want all them seasonings to go away. Let me roll him over for a minute. Well, let me try to roll him over for a minute. So I add a little bit more water and cover that back up. I don't think we're going to get much of that foamy stuff off this time around. It's coming along nicely though. Yeah. Okay, so well. Uh, that's doing its thing over there ever so slowly. We're going to grease up a bread pan. Really good. I like kind of standing white, which Means that you still see some of the white part of the shortening. Or I'm using a little bit of lard here. You can use shortening or lead or two, I suppose. really heavy. Yeah. All right. I think that'll be 
okay. It's kind of a standing right. I'm going to uh, start putting the bread together here in a second. Which what I've got here is two cups of uh, steel cut oats. I use Quaker. Um, soaked in, no I'm sorry, two and a half cups of steel cut oats soaked in two cups of buttermilk overnight. And a lot of times I'll put a little dollop of honey in there too while it's soaking. I did not this time and I cannot explain the why, I just, I just didn't do it. And then the dry ingredients are um, flour, salt, and baking soda. Uh, tell you the ratios here shortly. The whole thing comes from, sorry, I'm getting myself distracted, um, Darina Allen's Irish traditional cooking. It's one of her recipes. Um, we'll mix this together and put it in the, the bread pan. I'm trying to keep things together. The wind keeps picking up by the time I decide to do something. Once I get this mixed up, I'm going to go back and get a little bit more milk to loosen that back up. Alright, I'll be back in just a second. I've got to get some more milk. Okay, so got me a little bit more buttermilk. Um, something to consider too, you know, besides a little lemon juice or a little vinegar to regular milk um, to sour it. If you're for camping purposes, the powdered buttermilk works really good. Um, we found though it's better once you open it up to keep it in the refrigerator. Um, so. Got a little bit more milk. I'm gonna try to soften this up some. See how that goes. Yeah, this thing should make a really good brick. not to put too much in at one time. There we go. Yeah, see, there we go. That's, I think that's going to do us. this in here.
do hope that it's not going to rise too terribly much. There's no yeast, so it shouldn't rise a lot, lot, but still. Um, I'll explain why in just a second. Pretty good. It's windy, so I'm just going to cover it up for a few minutes while we get everything else ready. Then um, I'll explain that part too. I'm going to get me some coal started, and uh, um, once the oven's heated up and the coals are going, we'll we'll put this together. this nice good heat on the Dutch oven. So I've got four cans that were, uh, I think green chilies. That looks like the right can for them. Got the edges rounded off so you don't cut yourself. I'm going to use that as a standoff in here. Ooh, yeah, that got hot. Put that in there for a quick second while I get... bread in there, that way you get convection heat all the way around, and coal should be just about ready, so we'll move everything over to the table. I'm going to set that right there for the table. Time being, get my coals. Three fifty for an hour to an hour and a half. The way this wind is, and it's got a cold bite to it too. I do know that these coals are not going to make it an hour, so we will uh, come back and start some more coals probably at about a forty-minute mark. That's why I was trying to heat the heat the oven up as best I could ahead of time. May have spent a little too much time over direct flame, so I might have to re-season that later on. But we've got plenty more ovens, so 
downtime doesn't won't be too bad. All right, so we'll let that go. About 40 minutes, start some more coals, check on it in an hour. It cooks for an hour to an hour and a half. Okay, so I went to spin the lids around and I see an accident almost in the making. This lid is not very tight anymore. That bread is rising. And I don't want that bread to rise any more than it already has tried to do. Goofy? Yes. Can you? Where am I doing? Grab those out real fast. Very fast. Thank you. And thank okay. you. Although it's looking good, um, maybe tuna cans would have been better. Okay, we are coming up on three hours cook. Um, put new coals down on the bread. It's looking pretty good. I hope I get past that little squish lid mishap. Um, it's looking like it's going to be okay. So we need to just start getting some of our vegetables ready. I'm going to onions first. With the rutabaga. And then probably 15 minutes after that, drop turnips in. No, I think I'll wait on the turnips. Drop carrots and parsnips in after that. Turnips and potatoes after that. And then finish it with the cabbage. So I'll probably do them in little 15 minute increments. Just so everybody gets done about the same time. Uh, kind of weird, but I like the smell of onion peels and you throw them in the fire. No fine chopping on this or anything, just a... Gosh. Hey, Rufy, are you going in? Ru yeah. Can you bring another onion? This one has one of the nice bad spots right down the middle. Yeah, much better. I'm just going to kind of, I would say quarter them up, but I'm going to make them a little bit smaller than that. Maybe six.
and now that I'm starting to do some veggies and some other stuff, I've added a little bit more water to the cider a couple times. I'm going to add a little more pickling spice. Not a lot, but just a couple shakes. Okay, so it is coming up right at an hour and a half. Peaked on the bread already. I'm pretty sure it's done. Several stabbings with a knife were coming out clean. Let me tell you though, this thing's a beast. It rose, a <laughs> it rose quite a bit more than I was expecting it to. Um, in all honesty, it is the first time I have done it in a bread pan within a Dutch oven. So most of the time I do it and it's been in the house and it's been in a cake pan or it's been on a, a flat loaf and you just kind of do it like a you know one of them artisan breads where it's just a big rounded dough ball. This is the first time I've tried to put it in a confined space and probably could have used two bread pans. But let's take a peek on it see how it is. We're going to pull it and just let it cool off for a few minutes anyhow. Get ready, this thing again, like I said, is a beast. It is a good thing we lowered it and got it off them cans for a convection because it just never would have worked out. So we are going to set it right here for a few minutes to cool. And then, you know, if it didn't have that lid restricting it, Probably would have done okay. It's split on the back side over here, and uh, of course, with the lid restricting it, it cracked all across the top. It's gonna be tasty, just not as attractive as it should have been. Okay, so everything is coming together pretty well. The, uh, I carried the bread up into the house. Um, it, uh, oh, it's beautiful. Just tap, tap, fell right out of the pan. So it's, uh, it's all done. You know, at the end, you know, when taste test and all that other stuff, I'll get you a good slice so you can see it. But it, it came out really pretty. So I've got got this little bag of petite fingerling potatoes. They're going to be really pretty. They're not going to take a terribly a long time. And I bought three turnips. I'm thinking about only using two. So, let's see here. I got Those two are about even, and he's a little bit bigger. Eh, eh. Yeah. So, I'm going to get these peeled up and cut up into chunks like everything else, and then drop it in when I drop the petites in. And then, all we got left after that is a small head of cabbage, which I'm probably going to. Probably, probably six or maybe eight.
there he goes. Look at that. serving stuff, did we? No, I don't guess so. Well, it's family, so we can use fingers. Alright, so, good enough? Yeah. Alright. Don't Let's forget go. your cabbage. I know. I'm trying to... You're set down for a minute. I'll cut one half. Because I don't... That's how you make the half. No, I didn't know. I want to show you guys the bread. It came out really good. It just was a monster loaf. <laughs> but it's really good. Whatever that orange thing was, that's good. Not the carrot, the other orange. That's the rutabaga. Oh. Veggies are so good in this, I could just eat the veggies. Oh, good. That way it saves me the meat. Help yourself the veggies, Ruth. I like how you kept the core in that kept the uh, lettuce together. Yeah. The lettuce, cabbage. You know the parsnips. Mm -mm. Where are the parsnips? That was the one. Oh, I only have one. These are wonderful. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't get a carrot. Rutabaga. Salt, of course. Yeah, of course it is. That bread came out good. Mm -hmm. Very good, love. Thank you. Oh my mm. god. I'm <laughs> just sitting here shuffling it in my mouth because it's really good. She's right, the rutabaga is really good. Nice and tender. These little toe, what do you call these things? Finger. Finger links, yeah. Carrots are in. They're done, nice and tender. Parsnips, too. Most importantly, I didn't bring a knife. Don't need it. Just trying to get a little piece here. Cover the floor. Yeah. Mm. All right. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Yeah. That nice, beautiful piece of corned beef. Mm -mm. Thank you for sharing St. Patrick's Day with us and my birthday. And uh, I guess we'll see you next time.